I've been wearing this Venustus heated fleece jacket for a few months now, and I think I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we begin, I would just like to thank the company Venustus for sending me this heated fleece jacket so that I could share it with you. Now, I have been wearing this jacket for about four months. I've been wearing it around the house quite a bit, as well as out in the woods. So I've gained a considerable amount of experience and I can tell you quite a bit about it. Now, if you're not familiar with this new generation of heated garments, it uses a completely different technology than what the previous generations used. So what I thought I would do is I would take the jacket off and bring the camera in closer so that I can show you all the key features of this jacket as well as talk about that technology and about how the jacket operates. But before we do that, I thought I would back up and give you a full on view of how it fits on me. So let me just back up some here. All right, so just to give you some comparisons, I am five foot 10, I weigh 185 pounds, I wear a man's large shirt and jacket. This is a man's large jacket that I'm wearing, and as you can see, it is very true to size. It fits me in length in the sleeves as well as the body. I would say, however, that it is a little bit loose throughout the body, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just I wanna point out that it is not a snug to the body type of Garment. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll bring the camera in and show you some of the key features. All right, just before I give you a closer look at the jacket itself, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So to start, it did come in this zippered up plastic storage bag, and it has another plastic bag inside for storage. It's a Ziploc bag. I'm not quite sure why they felt the need for two, but that's okay. Uh, it does come with a manual. Now, this is not only the operating instructions, but also the warranty information, as well as the maintenance or care man, uh, directions for the jacket. And it did also come a box for the battery. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because I want to show you the, uh, oh, well, we'll show you a little bit more about the battery in a moment, but the battery itself comes with its own manual and warranty information, a USB Type-C charging cable, and a wall plug, which you can see I haven't had the need to use because I've got so many of them around the house right now. So let's go back to the jacket itself. So the shell material of this jacket is a 100% polyester fleece. Now there is a nylon lining that goes across the back and across the chest from about mid height up. And I'll talk more about that lining in a few moments time. The fleece itself appears to be very high quality. I've been wearing it now, like I say, for about four months out in the woods as well as around home. It has picked up a few stains here and there. It's not, it's a little hard to avoid, especially out in the woods. If I'm not wearing a jacket on top of this and I'm moving through the woods, it's going to get caught on branches and the like. And what I have found is that it's been very durable in the sense that it has not pilled up, it hasn't picked, it hasn't torn. Uh, yeah, I actually quite like it. And it's very, very soft as well. So it's very comfortable to wear. Some of the other features are, well, let's just show you. There's the label on the inside of the collar. It has a good quality zipper. I don't see that it is a YKK. No, it doesn't say YKK, but it appears to be a good quality zipper. Now, the hem of the jacket around the waist is an elasticized closure. There are no adjustments to keep it closed more than that. And on the end of each sleeve, also elasticized cuffs. Um, actually, I quite like that. There's, I didn't find there was a need for anything to tighten it up any more than that, either around my waist or a, around my wrists. It worked just fine. So simple is best in this case. One comment I'll make right now is that the pockets themselves uh, they do have a binding down the outside of them, but they're not zippered. So don't put anything inside that you uh, would be concerned about falling out. Not that it's happened to me, but they're, they're relatively shallow. Uh, well, actually, I should say relatively deep, but I, just the same, I wouldn't trust putting anything in there that I was concerned about losing, as I said. Now, the other feature of the jacket that I want to show you is the battery pouch. So there is the battery pouch, and this is on the left side of the jacket down near the uh, pocket on the outside. And inside of this zippered pouch is where the battery resides. Now, I'm going to show you the battery now attached to the jacket, and I'll speak to the jacket or to the battery a little bit more in one moment. I'll unattach it. And the other thing I'll show you before looking at the battery is the on off button. So that resides right up here on the chest. And what I'll do is I'll show you how it operates in a few moments time. 
So let's move on to the battery. So the battery itself is a 5,000 milliamp lithium polymer battery, not lithium ion, but lithium polymer. And it is not only the battery to operate the heating elements in this jacket, but it's also a power bank that you can use for recharging your cell phones, flashlights, whatever you, you need to recharge. So the features of this battery, of course, is that it has a USB type A output for charging other devices, a USB type C, type C input, and another output port over here. And this is where the jacket attaches to it. And it's a dedicated output for the jacket because unlike the other outputs, this one runs at 7.4 volts. So that's why it needs its own output for the jacket. Now, the other feature, which is kind of cool, is I'm trying to make sure I can show you, is there is a on off button now it's not an on off button to run the jacket itself but what it does is let's see i'm not sure if it's going to show up but right up here in the corner may have to no it's showing it's just not very bright 85 percent so what that buddy uh, battery a uh, button does is it illuminates the percentage charge left in the battery so you can always have an idea just how much power you have left so i've been wearing it around the house this morning and had it on so it has discharged a little but a couple thoughts on this number one is that and because it is a lithium polymer, this will stay charged for a very long time with it plugged in in my jacket while the jacket is not in use. Now, that's important because what you don't want to have happen is not having worn it for a while and then put it on and find out your battery has run down because of parasitic drain. Apparently, that's not an issue with this style of battery. Just the same, if I'm going to be out of season with this and storing it somewhere, I'm not going to leave it plugged in just uh, uh, for that reason. However, uh, like I said, having not worn it for a few days, picked it up, absolutely no drain. And we'll talk about the lifespan of the, of the battery in relation to the heating levels of the jacket in a few moments' time. Okay, so the technology around the jacket itself. I mentioned that it's different than what used to be. So I'm used to hearing about heated jackets that had uh, either a copper or some type of a wire running through the jacket that would heat up when uh, electricity was applied to it. Uh, uh, not something I was all that interested in. Uh, and they were also quite pricey as well. Well, the new generation is something completely different. These are made of carbon, carbon fiber, actually known as graphene, or gra it's made from graphite. And that's what is actually woven into the jacket in five places I'll talk about in a second. So what the benefit of that, of course, is not only do they heat up very efficiently, but they're also very durable. They're not going to rust or corrode. They're not going to break easily. So they're very durable and very efficient in terms of energy delivery. All right, so let's just talk about where the heating elements are located in this, uh, this garment. So what it has is right down the center, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up, there is a panel here that runs from about uh, just at the base of the neck, about halfway down my back, about this long. So that's one heating element. There are heating elements up on the shoulders, and there's heating elements on each side of the chest. So you have a total of five heating elements. I guess one thing I would have liked to have had is heating elements in the pocket, but you know, okay, that's just asking for it a little bit much. Although there are garments that do have heating elements in the pocket. This just is not one of them. Yeah, so uh, let's just put the battery back on and I'll show you how this operates and talk about its uh, temperature control. All right, so I put the jacket back on so I could get a, give you a better view of it being used in heating mode. So here is the on-off button right up here on the left side of my chest. Now, to turn the jacket on, you just press and hold the button for three to five seconds. And when the jacket turns on, what you'll see is that the button starts to glow red. It lights up and dims out. And what's that doing? It's a preheat. So it takes a few minutes for the jacket to come up to temperature. And while it does, that will just flash red like that. And once the jacket is up to an operating temperature, actually, I can actually start to feel it through my shoulders already. It will turn white. Let's just talk for a minute. We'll see if it turned white. I've never really timed how long it takes to turn white, but it'll turn white. Now, there are three levels of heat available 
to you, you through this button. So I'll just give you the stats on each of them. So the lowest level of heat is uh, when the light is turned blue and you just access that by pressing the button. When the light is blue, the elements will deliver a heat of 35 degrees Celsius, which is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And on a full battery, that will last nine to 11 hours. And I can verify that because I've, I've done exactly that. I turned the jacket on one day. I left the house a little bit cool so I could wear it all day. Turned the jacket on and just let it go to see. And I, I know I got at least eight hours out of it before I decided to take the jacket off. And at that point, there was still 15% charge left in the battery. So nine hours, I'm thinking nine to 10, maybe even the full 11 hours before it would run the battery completely down. Now there is a medium level heating on this and that is what the white light will indicate. Are we there yet? No, nope, still preheating. So, oh yeah, I can feel the heat all through here now. Uh, the white light will give you, a, or white level, medium level, will give you a temperature of 113 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 45 degrees Celsius and lasts between six and seven hours. And then there is the high mode. And the high mode is when the light is solid red and it will give you 130 degrees degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius lasting three to four hours. Now there is a note in the information to say those temperatures are regulated by the internal element. Your perceived heat levels are not quite that uh, that high. So what I can tell you now is this is heating up to what should be 113 degrees Fahrenheit. I can feel the warmth, but it doesn't feel like 113. I'm not quite sure how to describe it. So it's it's a relative heating. I think it's the way the jacket, the way it comes in contact and with, with your body and whatever you're wearing underneath. And we'll talk more about how you should likely wear this to get the best benefit out of it in a moment. But yeah, it's... It, uh, it's not fully, uh, like it's not, you're not gonna feel 130 degrees inside the jacket. And maybe that's the best way to say it. Are we at white well, yet? Yeah. No, still preheating. Even so, even preheating, I can feel the warmth all through my chest, through my upper back and all my shoulders. That's quite nice. All right, what I wanna do now is just to give you the benefit of some of my experience wearing this jacket. And we'll also talk about maintenance of it. All right, I took the jacket off so that I could show you a feature of the inside of the jacket and talk about its relationship to its effectiveness when you're wearing it. But before I do, I just want to talk about wearing a garment like this while you're out in the woods. So basically, I use this as a my first layer of insulation on top of my base layer. So it's often referred to as a mid layer. Now, when I go out into the woods, it's a merino wool shirt of some type of base layer that I wear because that is the most comfortable, especially as you start to perspire. It helps to keep your warmth and move moisture away from your body. Around the house, of course, I'm just wearing it over a cotton shirt because I'm not doing any activities that are likely to cause me to perspire. So this would go on top of my base layer. And you, that's all you really want to wear under this jacket is something thin, like this shirt or like a base layer, because you want those heating elements as close to your body as is reasonable, not bare skin, but close to your body so you can get the full effect from them. At the same time, it's really helpful if you wear a shell over top of this jacket. Something with a windproof shell to keep the heat retained with inside because of course the heat is radiating in and out at the same time and you don't want the wind convection to draw the heat off. So a shell on the outside is great. Now the way I use it is when I put this on, I put a shell on and I go out into the woods, I don't turn the jacket on because I want to remain somewhat cool so as I move through the woods carrying a backpack climbing over rocks and boulders and going up and down hills. As I start to work up a bit of a perspiration, I want my base layer to work in terms of evacuating all that moisture out away from my body. Adding additional heat at that point is just going to make the situation worse. So one of the nice things about this jacket, of course, is that it has a full length zip. So if I start to heat up, it's easy to open up and ventilate or actually take it right off if it start to if I start to get very warm. Because of course the key is stay dry, stay dry, stay warm. It's just that simple. Okay, now having said all of that, there is a feature of this jacket that tends to work against me sometimes. Let me show you that. So I showed you a few minutes ago 
though, that it has a nylon shell on the inside. Now, it's quite comfortable, and it is functional, and what it's there for is two things. One, it's a very thin layer between your body and the heating elements, just enough to offer some protection from the heat or from being too hot, as well as, I think, to prevent much moisture from transferring through to the, uh, to the garment, because it does say in the instructions, do not wear while wet. And uh, what I think happens is this is, I don't think it's waterproof, but I think it is quite water resistant and understandably so. However, when you wear this out in the woods, it means that you're likely to trap more moisture inside of the jacket. So you have to be more conscious that if you're starting to work up a perspiration that you ventilate because this is just going to exaggerate that because it's not going to breathe as well as just a straight up fleece jacket or a wool jacket or anything else where that can breathe better than this. So I'm going to say that's a bit of a con or a relative con. If you are aware of it, then you'll know to either take the jacket off or at least open it up so that you get air moving around the jacket and that's not even with the heating element on because as I mentioned I go out into the woods I don't turn the heating element on until I get to my destination and I stop moving because it's at that point that you start to cool down so if I start to feel the chill after I stop moving that's when I'll turn the heat on and then determine what level of heat it is that I want to wear depending on at the outside temperatures are. I think this jacket would be really ideal for anybody who uh, does exactly that either wants a lightweight jacket that will give them the option of a little extra heat when they go out or someone who is stagnant in other words they move out to a location and then sit like somebody who hunts or fishes or a photographer I can see all kinds of people that would make use of this it's not something where I use the heat from the moment I leave the door until I get home just when I feel the need for the heat and that's the way I think is the best way to make use of this jacket all right I think we're about ready to wrap this video up just a couple more things I want to mention. First off, I want to show you now the button on the jacket is showing white, indicating that it's at the mid level of heat. To change that, all I need to do is quick press the button and then the light turns blue, indicating it's at the lowest level of heat. And if I want to change it to again, I press again. Now it's at red, the highest level of heat. And to turn it off, I just press and hold for about two and a half seconds and the jacket is now off. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the care and maintenance of the jacket. So as I said, I've been wearing a boat for months now and uh, it's gotten a little dirty now and then, mostly surface stains. I have not needed to wash it all. I've had to do at this point is just use a wet cloth to wipe off. It's just picked up a little bit of dirt from being out in the woods. I know at some point I am going to have to wash this and that's the nice thing about it is you can machine wash it. However, the company does recommend that you use some type of a mesh bag to put it in to just protect the garment from any damage. The only thing is they didn't provide one. In fact, I think I would sooner have the company provide a mesh wash bag for this jacket than that Ziploc plastic storage bag. Uh, I don't feel the need for that. Having said that, it's not a big deal because those mesh bags are available. I know you can purchase them at Walmart and I've even seen them at the dollar store for a dollar. So uh, if you do buy one of these and they don't start including that mesh bag, make sure you go out and get one for washing it with. All right, so that's maintenance of it. Now, the last thing I want to mention is, of course, I'm going to be providing you the links to where you can go and take a closer look at this jacket as well as the extensive lineup of heated garments they have. And as I mentioned, they have full-on hard shell jackets and vests, both fleece and nylon puffy vests, as well as jackets like this. So there is quite a range of garments that you can take a look at to see if there's anything there that does interest you. And if there is anything there that interests you, the company has given me a discount code for 15% off that I can share with you. So I'll put that on the screen right now, but I'll also put it in the information below in the video description for you as well. So the links will be there and the discount code will be there as well as all the specifications for the jacket itself. All right, that's everything I have to share with you today. If you have any questions or comments regarding this jacket, then please put them in the comments section below. But of course, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.